praises to the most high. Okay, so today we're gonna go over a quick topic. Today's topic is called Thy Will Be Done. Thy will be done. Most eyes will be done. We're gonna start off in the book of Sirach in the Apocrypha. And we'll take questions afterwards. We have a, quite a few questions that was put in the box. We'll answer those after if we have the time. We're gonna start in the book of uh, Sirach 17 and we're gonna read from verse 1 all the way down to 21. Again, today's topic is Thy will be done. Let's read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 1. Read. The Lord created man of the earth and turned him into it again. He gave them few days and a short time and power also over the things therein. He endured them with strength by themselves and made them according to his image. And he made them, many man, according to his image. Real quick, if you could pull up the definition of will. Pull up the definition of will. Okay, and um, Officer, read on again from verse 2. Verse 2. He gave them few days and a short time, and power also over the things therein. He endued them with strength by themselves. So he endued mankind with strength by themselves, meaning he gave us enough knowledge, enough wisdom for us to maintain ourselves. He was going to be no longer on earth guiding us. We were going to have to guide ourselves by the counsels and wisdom that he left. He endued them with wisdom and or with strength by themselves. He made us in his image. We had his characteristics. We had his spirit to operate by ourselves. Read on. And made them according to his image. And he made them according to his image. Read on. And put the fear of man upon all flesh mm -hmm. and gave him dominion over beasts and fowl. They received the use of the five operations of the Lord. And in six and in sixth place he imparted them understanding. And in the seventh, speech, and interpreter, and of the co cogitations thereof. Now, is there another definition? Maybe you can pull up. See if you can uh, get it from somewhere else in more detail. Okay, that's that that'll work. Okay, read on. Verse 6, counsel and a tongue in eyes, ears and a heart gave he them to understand. Withal, he filled them with the knowledge of understanding mm -hmm. and, showed, and showed them good and evil. So again, when it says he endued them with strength by themselves, he wanted to see how we would operate with the understanding that he gave us to see whether we would do either good or evil. He said he filled them with knowledge and understanding and showed us good and evil, showed us what was, what was right, and he wanted to see how far we were going to go with it. Were we going to lean upon his counsel? What we were going to do with his understanding? Read on. He set his eye upon their hearts. And he sat back and he watched. He set, their, he set his heart, he set his eyes upon our heart to see what we was going to do with that understanding. I gave them what they needed. Let's see if they're actually going to do it. Read on. That he might show them the greatness of his works. Read. He gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever. Mm -hmm. That they might declare his works with understanding. And that's what we were supposed to do with his understanding. To do what? Read verse, um, what was that verse? Read verse 9 nine again. He gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever. And he gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever. That what? That they might declare his work with understanding. This is why it says, let your light shine therefore men, that they, the men may see your works and glorify your Father which is in heaven by the things that you do or by the things that we do. Read on. And the elect shall praise his holy name. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for inheritance. He made an everlasting covenant with them and showed them his judgment. Uh -huh. Their eyes saw the majesty of his glory, and their ears hear, heard his glorious voice. Read. And he said unto them, Beware of all unrighteousness. And he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. Their way are ever before him, mm -hmm. and shall not be hid from his eyes. Every man from his youth is given to evil. Neither could they make to themselves fleshly Make to themselves fleshly hearts for stoning. When you read in the book of Ezekiel 36 and 26, it's talking 
That's, that fleshly heart is what we're going to receive in the wilderness. That's when the Most High is actually going to perfect us. That fleshly heart is a heart which you would have or we would have at that time where no man will be able to tell you anything about know ye the Lord. You, in that day it says, and all flesh will know. So that fleshly heart is a heart after the Most High's heart. That's what we can't make to ourselves. Again, this is why he put us in the earth with the understanding that we have to see how we would eventually measure to that point. To see what we would do with that, that information. You understand? To see if we can actually get to that point. Read on. For in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. Mm -hmm. But Israel is the Lord's portion. Read. Whom, being his firstborn, he nourishes with discipline. And giving him the light of his love does not forsake him. Read. Therefore, all their works are as the sun before him, and his eyes are continually upon their ways. None of their unrighteous deeds are hid from him, but all their sins are before the Lord. And all of our sins are before the Lord. Read. But the Lord being gracious and knowing his workmanship. But the Lord being gracious and knowing what he created. Read. Neither left nor forsook them, but spared them. But he spared us. So basically, we're upon earth, and the Most High wants to see how much we're going to serve Him. He's stepping back to see, what, if, what are they going to do with my counsel? Are they going to keep hold of my judgments? Are they going to keep hold of righteousness? Are they going to do right when I come? Are they going to be doing exactly that, what I told Adam to do? From that, let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Wisdom. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter... Let's start at verse, chapter 1. I'm going to read verse... Uh, Three. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse 1. Read. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Read. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Mm -hmm. What profit hath a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? Read. One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh. But the earth abideth forever. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goes down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. Mm -hmm. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about into the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Mm -hmm. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot, man cannot utter it. So man cannot explain it. That's what it's saying in verse 8. All things are full of labor and man cannot utter it. So now it's talking about the works that, it's talking about the creation in their works. The sun in its works. The waters within its works. Okay, the wind and also its works. Now read on. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. Read. Because nor we the cannot end. comprehend these things. We don't know how these things operate, but we know we see them at work. Read. Nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. The thing which hath been, it is that which shall be. Read. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. All right. And there is no new thing under the sun. Mm -hmm. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It has been already of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Read. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. Mm. And this sore travail has God given to the sons of man to be exercised their will. So, it says, this sort of travail have God given, because this is what verse 9 through 11 was going into. It was going into man. What Solomon realized is that everything that man has done from the beginning, they're doing today. When will we ever figure it out that our works have to change? They have to fit the plan of the Most High. So he said, in order for him to figure out what is it, that we ought to do. He said, you know what? I gave myself the foolishness. I gave myself the wisdom. I even became to the lowest state where I also had much more and abundant more. I went through all of these things to figure out what is it that we see within ourselves that we can't change? What do we need to do different? Because there's nothing new under the sun. All of our works are the same. 
as from the beginning, so it is now. So what is it that the Most High is really trying to show us? He said that when he thought about it, he says, this is an exercise that man, uh, God has taken man through. Read on. I have, verse 14, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Read. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I commune with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge, and I gave my heart to wisdom, and I gave my heart to know wisdom, and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this is also vexation of spirit, mm -hmm. for in such wisdom is much grief, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. So he took himself through everything that man could ever do on earth. This, this, uh, uh, do on earth. Just to understand the works of the Most High, just to understand the purpose of life. Why do we do the things that we do? So he indulged, he, he indulged in everything just to figure out what is the purpose of man? Why does his works, why does his works not change? Why does he continually do the things that he's done from the beginning up to this day? So he gave himself to different things. And I'm saying this for the for the sake of explaining Ecclesiastes. I was looking at Ecclesiastes. Matter of fact, from that, I'll just show you better than I can tell you. Let's go from that to the eighth chapter. Eighth chapter. The book of Ecclesiastes, go, uh, it, it boils down to one thing. You can't change the course of life. Neither can we dictate it. So when you look at man's life, what Solomon, what he observed is, no matter the estate, he says, whether he be a fool or whether he be wise, they all go to the same place. That's the grave. So it don't matter whatever the status is, whether you're being oppressed or whether you're the oppressor. You don't have to answer to somebody. That's when you go to the book of Ecclesiastes, they say, tell you that I've seen upon earth the oppressed, and I've seen above them, they had no answer. And above them, there was there'd be even higher that regard regarded the matter. So he was basically summing up, whatever the status is, you have to accept the will of the Most High. The in conclusion of it is, fear God and keep his commandments. Either way, you're gonna get a good result out of it. Whether you're in a bad situation or you're in a good situation, when you die and you be judged before the Most High, he's gonna, you, your, your judgment is gonna be determined by how you dealt with the status that he gave you. How did you deal with the situation that he gave you? That's why he gave himself to in different situations. What was your outcome? How did you, let's, let's, matter of fact, let's read on. Read 8, 14. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter eight and verse 14. Mm -hmm. There is vanity which is done upon the earth, that there be just men, unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. So here's an example. Read. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that is also his vanity. Then I commended mirth because a man has no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry. So he says there be things that happen on earth that we wouldn't understand. Just things that happen to the wicked because of the doings of the righteous. Or there be things that happen to the wicked or and vice versa. There'll be certain things that happen to certain people for no good apparent reason. No good reason at all. It's not because they've done anything good, it's because for the sake of the righteous. Now, if you say, for instance, that you were in that situation, that something happened to somebody that it was just out, just outright wicked, and he just received the blessings that came from your right doings, how would you feel about that? Would you question the most high on his will? Or would you accept it and say, you know what? Fear God and keep his commandments. It's just as simple as that. I don't know why the Most High gave him that level, of, uh, gave him that position over me when it was my doings, or her over my doings. What? Why did the Most High make that choice? It's not for us to question that. This is what Solomon was saying. At the end of this thing, fear God and keep his commandments. This is what he came to realize. So I'm gonna jump straight into it. I'm going to jump straight into it. I had another thing. Matter of fact, let's go to the last part of this. Chapter 12, verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, and verse 10. 
The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. So he basically summed up all of his experience, everything that he's seen on the earth, and he sought out acceptable words for us to understand it. Because we're going to question these things. Why is it that somebody that can be out there in a world that uses drugs and don't care about the Most High, ain't trying to change, can live a healthy life, can live walking around, that's what I mean by healthy, live walking around, doing whatever they want to do, disrespecting and, and doing whatever they could do to people, and they live a life and Most High grant them life each and every day. But then you have somebody that believes He takes them and removes them. Why is it set up like that? Certain things we would question because we're just man. But the Most High, again, this is what we're going to go into, the book of Job. The Most High governs the entire world. A lot of these things that we experience on earth is for us. He wants to see, would you, dis, would you distrust in him because you don't understand? Him? Or would you lean upon him with all your heart, with all your, with all your soul, and know that he got everything in control? Even just the things that happen to us. Are you willing to forget? Are you willing to forget those things and understand that I was just bringing you through a trial? I want to see if you actually trust me. Do you forgive yourself? Do you trust that I made the right decision for you to go through those things? Do you accept the will that I chose for you? Do you accept the destiny that I chose for you? Or is it that your will you were supposed to go through? It? Are you questioning? That's what the most high he steps back and want to see how we operate with his decisions. Let's go from that. Let matter of fact, read on. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as gold, and as nails fastened by the masters of assembly, which are given from one shepherd. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end. And much study is weariness of the flesh. So he said there's nothing else that can explain the situation. You can't go to a scientist, he can't explain life to you. He can't explain your life to you. There's nothing else that you can go and study to make sense of this life that we have. It's not for you to make sense of it. It's for you to live. And those judgments and whatever the Most High determines, do you accept it? Can you live through it? Can you, can you uh, what he says, uh, set your mind right and constantly endure? Can you do it? So nobody can't explain this to you. There's no scientific the uh, equation that we can put out there to say why are you going through what you're going through. The Most High gave you that trial because maybe he sees something in you. He sees something in Peter. That's why he gave it to him. Read on. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So he said, you know what? I know what's acceptable. I know what the, the, the readers that come behind me, I know what they need to find. When they open this book, I'll give them the solution. I'll give them what I came up with. This is the equation. This is the solution to the problem. Read it again. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. Read. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty and reason of man. Read. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, I had wrote something down. Again, I had to write my thoughts down because I forget them. So, I came up with an example. I use job, a, a job as an example. Say for an example, you're asking for the job. You're asking, you're praying to the Most High for a job. And this job can make a life change. You need this particular job to make everything work. And without this one phone call from this job you were expecting to call you, everything was going to go into shambles from there, right? You fast, you pray to the Most High. You have also read the scripture. Look, Christ said, if I ask anything in the Father's name, he's going to give it to me. You have all that confidence. High hopes. And that job doesn't call you back. And now, you're kicked out of that house that you was trying to save. Now you have to go to somebody else's house and live with them. Would you look at that as the will of the Most High? If that's what he chose for you and that's what he allowed to happen, will you accept that will? Will we accept that will? That's the question I got to ask myself. Will we say, you know what? I'll praise to the Most High. That's your will. I wasn't supposed to get the job. The house that I lost, maybe it wasn't for me. Will we look at it like that? Or will we question the Most High? What happened? I don't know what went wrong. 
I prayed to the Most High. I thought he said that if I ask anything in his name, he'll give it to me. Will you look at it like that or will you question Most High? Let's read an example. Let's go to the book of Job. Everything that, I wrote this part down too. Everything that we experience in life is either revealed or shown to us to reveal things in ourselves or to reveal others around us. It's always a learning situation. Even the plagues, when you look at the, the, the different gods that he destroyed or the things that he caused Egypt to go through, it was for a reason. There was nothing's on earth without a reason. Everything is done with counsel. Everything. So let's go to the book of Job. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter 1. Let's read verse 1. The book of Job, chapter 1 and verse 1. There was a man in the land of Ud, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and excused evil. See, this, this brother was perfect. He said he was a man that was perfect, upright, and one that feareth God. And did what? Excused evil. He pushed away evil. He stayed away from evil. Nobody could say nothing about him. Him being in evil. He was righteous. Read on. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household that so that his man was the greatest of all the men of the east. So he was a man of high reputation because of the things that he had. He had a bunch of livestock. Much he didn't he, he can survive, he, he can do it on his own without any help. He didn't have to lend, or he didn't have to beg. He could lend. This man has great status. Read on. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, mm -hmm. and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so, when the, day, the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may, be, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Now this is the point we want to get to. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it, and the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? Has thou did what? Considered my servant Job? You see what the Lord called Job? Can we get the definition of the word servant? A person who performs duties for others. Especially a person employed in a house or domestic duties. Or as a person attended. So it's a person that performs the duty of, of others. So what is our duty? We just read it. To serve the Most High. And it don't matter the circumstance that he put us under. He said, have you considered my servant Job? Now, let's read on. Let's read on. Just wanted to get that definition. We're going to come back to that later. That there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and upright man. One that fears God and excused evil. Mm-hmm. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? He said, well, it's obviously that he fears you because look at the stuff that he had. He knows that you're going to provide for him. Take that stuff away from him and let's see how he feel about you then. This man don't really serve you the way you think he do. He's only serving you because of the stuff that he got. He's an opportunist. That's why he's serving you. Read on. Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house? And about all that he hath on every side. He said, look at all this stuff. This is why he's serving you. Read it. Thou hast blessed the work of his hand, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. You see that? And this is everybody's situation in this room. Again, and this is just one brother showing us, and, and most I didn't even have to do this to him. He did this to him so we can learn from him. He was used as an example. Job didn't understand that he, his, his life 
And his, everything that he went through will be used for somebody else like us in the future. All everything that we go through is for somebody else. I don't know how many times we say that. Everything that you all go through, you sisters go through, us brothers go through, is for somebody else behind you. It's for somebody else to learn from. So we ought to not question anything that we go through. Okay, so we should look at it and say, you know what? All praises is the will of the Most High. Is it something that I'm doing or maybe it's for somebody else to learn from? Either way, I accept it. I accept it because that's selfless. I'm going to examine myself and it's me, I'll change. But if it's not, maybe it's for somebody else. All praises. Whoever that person is, I can't wait to get, give them the experience that I gained from them. And that's what we're going to read about Job. Everything is selfishness. Everything works in that way. Everything, the way the Most High created this world, the way it operates, everything works off of each other. For a prime example, right? The, the trees gives us what? Oxygen, right? And we give the trees what? Huh? Carbon dioxide, right? You see, everything, everything works in unison. So if we decide that, you know what? I don't want to live that life that you got for me, Lord. I'd rather do something else. Then you throw off the balance of everything else that he has set up. It's not your choice. You're a servant. Everything operates the way it's supposed to. The sun goes down on its course. The, the, the wind blows about on its circuits. We are supposed to operate whatever, the, we're supposed to operate whatever, uh, uh, operate within whatever the Most High put us in. And we're not supposed to question it. Because it's going to work for somebody else, the person that you don't know. That's how it's going to work. Let's go, let's read on, let's read on. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the ashes beating beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. All your servants are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Mm -hmm. While he was yet speaking, there and came... And while he was yet speaking, there he came... He had already heard this man say, All your servants are dead. Think about how he felt at that time. All my servants are what? Yeah, the Sabians came and fell on me. I just happened to escape so I can tell you. And then he turned around, read on. While he yet speak, was speaking, there came another also and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and has burned up the sheep and thy servants and consumed them. And now all your animals are done. They're dead. A fire consumed your animals, read on. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. This is the second person that came to him, read on. While he was yet speaking. And while this person was yet speaking, read. There came another. To top it off, read on. And said, the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried away and have carried them away. Yea, and the slain of the servants of the edge of carried them, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. Read. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Mm -hmm. While he was yet speaking. There came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine at their eldest brother's house. Thy what? Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Now Job already knew from everything that he heard, this wasn't some good news that was coming. So imagine what was going through his mind. Read. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. All your children are dead, Job. Everybody, everything that you had, your cattle, your servants, and your children, they all gone. And then after this, his wife, why don't you just curse God and die? Everything happened at that one time. Everything. Everything going wrong. Haywire at this point. But he was a man that feared God, excused evil, and kept his, all his commandments. You think Job questioned, like, what, what is going on? He did. We're going to read about his life. Let's read on. Let's go from that to the book of, uh, let's go to chapter 4, verse 1. Book of Job, chapter 4, and verse 1. Then Eliphaz, the Temanite, answered and said. So we're going to read something about his friends, the people that were around him. They believe, like Job, something ain't right. Let's read on, read on. If we are safe to commune with thee, wilt thou be grieved? 
But who can withhold himself from speaking? Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholded him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. But now it is come upon thee, and thou faintest. It touches thee, and thou art troubled. What happened to the counsel that you gave everybody else? Look at yourself. You gave everybody else counsel to endure, to stand up manfully, gird up your loins. But look at you. What 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 is wrong with you? Did you even believe the advice that you gave me? Read on. Is not this thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished, being innocent, or were or where were the righteous cut off? Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. So his friends around him like, you done something evil, man. Some you you done something. Something ain't right. Now Job knowing what he did already, he knows what type of person he is. But again, he don't understand what the most high was trying to show him. So on earth he's thinking like, maybe you're right. But in his friends like You've done something. You reap iniquity. You sow iniquity, you reap iniquity. Something ain't right, Job. You've done something wrong. So that's one. Let's go to another one. Let's go to Job 8. 8 and 1. The book of Job, chapter 8 and verse 1. Then answered Bildad the Shuite, and said, How long wilt thou speak these things? And how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? So Job began, as you read, I'm jumping, but as you begin to read Job, a lot of things he began to say to question. It kind of shows you where he fell off at certain times. He didn't um, sin against God, but he questioned. He questioned God's motives. He questioned whether or not that this, was this the way that he was supposed to live? Being that he was righteous, why was he being suffering? Why was he being tormented? Does God really see his afflictions? So he questioned those things. Read on. Does God pervert judgment? Or does the Almighty pervert justice? If thy children have sinned against him, and he hath cast them away for their transgression. Maybe your children sin, Joe. Maybe that's just what it is. It put all of these possibilities in his head. Read on. If thou wouldest seek unto God betimes, and make thy supplication to the Almighty, if thou wert pure and upright, surely now he would await for thee, and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosper. So he said, Job, you've been praying, the most I ain't heard you. It says, if you were pure and upright, surely now would he awaken for you. There's nothing changing about you, Job. It's obviously something that you're doing that is wrong. You need to examine this thing. But again, Job knows that he's not doing nothing wrong. Again, you got to put yourself in his shoes. This right here gets you the question like, what am I doing wrong? These brothers, all these sisters ain't telling me what I need to, I'm, I know I'm innocent in this situation. I know I'm not doing nothing wrong. Lord, what are you trying to show me? And the Most High is still not answering. But then again, this is what the Most High want to see. Pressure bus pipes. You want to see if you really believe. Are you going to serve him through whatever the circumstances is? You got something? Yes, sir. You know what's crazy about that part um, where it says, If thy children have sinned against him and have cast him away for their transgression. He's trying to cast doubt in Job's mind because Job already know that his children was celebrating their birthday. Mm -hmm. He already know that they was in wickedness. So he's like, dang, maybe I'm being judged for, for them. Um... You know what I'm saying? Like all these things, so troubles and trials, a lot of these things come and they start to cast doubt. They start to cast doubt. I want to get one scripture cut real quick. Can we go to um, Proverbs 13 and 12? Proverbs 13 and 12. This is, because we talked about high hopes. What happens with the high hopes that we have sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Get this real quick. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13 and verse 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. A hope deferred maketh the heart sick. So when it doesn't come to pass, then the mind starts to get sick. Like, dang, man, maybe maybe this ain't of God. Yeah. Maybe he don't want me to have that. Maybe, you know, I shouldn't try again. Maybe I shouldn't be this, you know, do this. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? A hope deferred, it makes the heart sick. Now we start thinking and double-guessing double God. Read but when the desire cometh, 
it is a tree of life. But on the other hand, when we when something does come through, oh man, God bless this. When it may not even be of God. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, back to the point. This is what's happening in Job. The hope that's being deferred, his family, his substances, his uh, pros his prosperity, is it going to make his heart sick? That's the question. Is it the, his hope that's being deferred? Is it going to make his mind sick? Is it going to put him into a state of depression? Is it going to put him into a state of, you know, going into the darkness? That's really what it's going into. So I'll praise you. It goes back to that one scripture where it says, uh, in the day of thy prosperity, remember affliction. And in the affliction, remember prosperity. Yeah? So it's like we have to balance or remember. Like, for one, when, when do we read when Job, I haven't read it. When do we read with Job, we say, you know what? The cattle that I lost, that actually came from the Most High. The children that I begat, it says, they're like arrows in the reward of a just man. I forget the paraphrase, it's Psalms 24. Like, all the thing, everything that he, he lost, he got from the Most High. So, we got a question, when did the balance come in and say, you know what? This is the Most High, this is a trial. But we see the opposite of that. But then we start to see the change as, as we read on. But Job is written for us to learn from. It's like, we can see the mistakes before it come based off what he did. It's like, at the time that he should have reflected and said, you know what, I got these blessings from the Most High. He's taking it just as, just as he gave it. It's for us now so we can look on it and say, you know what, I can catch myself before I even get to that point where Job got to even question the Most High. That's, what, that's why these records are written. This is why it says the destruction of life. Job lived an example for us. So let's go from that. Let's go to the book of God. Uh, we're gonna go back to the book of Job. We're gonna read chapter 10. We're gonna stay in Job um, quite a bit. The book of Job, chapter 10 and verse one. Three, uh, 10 and three. Verse three. Is it good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress, that thou shouldest despise the work of the hand, and shine upon the counsel of the wicked. So now he's beginning to question the Most High. He says, do what? Is it good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress, that thou shouldest despise the work of, the, of thine hand? So Lord, is it good for you to, uh, that thou shouldest oppress the people that are good or despise the work of your hand? Look at my flesh. You got boils everywhere. My skin is diseased. Lord, is this what you want? This is what he's asking the most of because all these things happen. His skin had boils. He lost his children. His wife, he lost his wife. He lost his house. He lost everything. Now he's questioning, read. And shine upon the counsel of the wicked. Has thou eyes of flesh? He said, you got eyes like men? Do you not see the spirit? Do you see what man see? Read. Or seest thou as man seeth? Are thy days as the days of man? Are thy years as man's day? Now he's giving the question the most high is eternity, his power. Read. That thou inquirest after my iniquity and searchest after my sin. Thou knowest that I am not wicked. So he's able to say, Lord, you know I'm not wicked. I don't understand why you're taking me through these things. I don't, I don't get it. You know that I'm not wicked. Read. And there is none that can deliver out of thine hand. Thine hands have made me and fashioned me together round about. Yet thou dost destroy me. Remember, I beseech thee, that thou hast made me as the, as the clay. And wilt thou bring me into dust again? Hast thou not poured me out as milk, and curdled, curdled me like cheese? Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh, and hast fenced me with bones and sinews. Read. Thou hast granted me life and favor. You granted me life and favor. And thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. Mm. And these things hast thou hid in thine heart. I know that this is with thee. I know that this is with you. I know that you are able to change the status, but I don't understand why you bringing me through these things that I'm going through now. Read. If I sin, then thou makest, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from my iniquity. If I be wicked, what so it says, if I sin, then thou markest me. Would thou not acquit me of my iniquity? So Job was like, I don't get it. I ask for why, I'm asking why am I going through these things? I pray to you, do you not forgive? Is there some changes that have come? Is there some, are you gonna relieve me of the, at least the sores? 
is something going to change. Nothing ever changed. But he still had the same friends around him saying, Job, you've done something wicked. You need to examine yourself. But he knows that he hasn't done anything. The reason why we read this because, again, this right here is an image of life that we live. We don't understand everything that goes on. But, again, this was a counsel in heaven. This was a counsel in heaven. Something that, we didn't, something that Job didn't see. Something that we would never see. We just have to live out the will. Because all of it is the will. Regardless if it's your will or the Most High's will. His will be done. That's what we pray every Sabbath, right? His will be done, right? That will be done as it is in heaven, so it be on earth, right? That's what we all agree to? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when things go wrong, is that still His will? Yes, sir. Do you accept it? Do we accept it? That's what we got to look at. Do we accept it? Lord, I lost my job. Yeah, it's hard, but hey, that's your will. Yes, sir. I'll praise it to the Most High. Maybe you saw something. But I know that I'll never go hungry because I got brothers and sisters around me. When we look at the, the, the bigger picture of it, the Most High ain't going to, he, he's not trying to take you out. He's trying to build you up. He has different things for different, he has different situations for different people because he knows what we can handle. That's why he gives it to us. Certain things that you go through, I might, be able, I might not be able to handle. Certain things that I go through, you might not be able to handle. But this is why we're around each other, to encourage one another. Just like the example that we gave about the site with the trees and man. These things work off one another. This is why you go through something so we can benefit each other. Everybody that's in here comes from some different walk of life. And everything that you have can help somebody else in here. Um, you finished uh, verse 14, right? Yes, sir. I'm on verse 15. Jump to chapter 16, verse 1. The book of Job chapter 16 verse 1 Then Job answered and said I have heard many such things Miserable comforters are ye all So he started to get on his friends You so miserable comforters mm. you, don't, you are good for nothing Read Shall vain words have an end Or what embolden Embolden, embolden thee That thou answerest I also could speak as ye do, if your soul were in my soul's stead. Okay, so here's when the spirit started to work now, when Satan started jumping on you, you don't know what I'm going through. If you, if I was in your shoes, I could say, I could tell you the same thing. You have no idea. I, this is when you start to say, nobody understands me. I'm not going to the Sabbath today. None of y'all understand. If y'all were in my shoes, it's easy for you to say, keep going, right. trust in the Lord. None of you understand what I'm going through. This is how Job felt. Read on. I could heap up words against you and shake my head at you. He said, I can heap up words, the same words you're telling me. I can heap up the same words against you and shake my head. Like, Job, how you want to say? I can say the same thing about y'all. Read. But I would strengthen you with my mouth. But I wouldn't even do that to y'all. Read. And the moving of my lips should assuage your grief. He said, but the counsel that I give you would assuage your grief. So, again, we, we're walking through Job's life. That's all this is. Just, just follow along. Follow along. Okay, from that, let's go to 17, verse 9. Book of Job, chapter 17, and verse 9. The righteous also shall hold on, shall hold on his way, and he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. But as you all do, but as you all do ye return, and come now, for I cannot find one wise man among you. So again, man could not explain it. This is what Solomon was trying to tell us. And no book on earth can explain this. The Most High has to explain it. And he explained it. This is your duty on earth. Fear God and keep his commandments. Things that you don't understand, you'll be able to ask him face to face. And he'll, he'll explain to you things that you could have never thought. I saw strength in you. That's why I did it. I know you can do it. That's why I did it. But you see the, the, the life that you live, the life that you chose to live by the counsel that you took? Let me show you who's a, who was impacted by it. You see these people over here? They saw what you've been through. They were encouraged by your works. They got hit because of your strength. That's how it works. It's things that we don't see the most I see. So we got to be content with it. He's God. Let's read. Uh, let's go from that. From verse uh, uh, chapter 26. Chapter 26. The book of Job, chapter 26, and verse 1. But Job answered and said, 
How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that has no strength? So again, Job, he's on a, a, an emotional roller coaster. Now he's going back to target God. His friends, he questioned himself, say, you know what? I'm not doing nothing wrong. Y'all ain't no good. It, it's God. That's what it is. That's God. Read. How hast thou counseled him that hath no wisdom? Lord, how you counsel him that hath no wisdom? Read. And how hast thou plentifully declared the thing as it is? To whom hast thou uttered words? And whose spirit came up from thee? Dead things are formed under the water, mm -hmm. and the inhabitants thereof. All of this power that you get, dead things are formed under the water. Many things without life are cre created. Whales created under water. Fish created under water. How is it that these things you create, but then I'm going through all of this, I get no response. I don't get it. All of this power that you hold, and I'm praying for you to change my situation, and you, you, nothing's changing. But you're able to create whales out of, out of elements in the water. But my situation stays the same. Read. Verse 6. Hell is naked before him, and destruction has no covering. He stretches out the north over the empty place, and hangeth the earth about upon nothing. The earth right now is hanging upon nothing. Ain't nothing holding this earth up. All of this is, is, is through faith. So it's something else for us to think about. When we're going through something like, man, this is, I don't get this. But then you you could ask ourselves, like, well, how is the earth holding up? That's God, ain't it? Right? It's God. So why don't we look at him in our situation like, you know what, this is God too. God is going to help me through this just as like he's able to hold the earth up. The most I shouldn't be absent from none of our thoughts. The think of the impossibilities. None of our thoughts. See, let's go from that. Uh, from, from that to the book of uh, chapter 31. Chapter 31, verse 28. The book of Job, chapter 31 and verse 28. This also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge. For I should have denied the God that is above. If I rejoice at the destruction of him that hated me, or lifted up myself when evil found him, neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. If the men of my tabernacle said not, oh that he had, oh that we had of this of his flesh, we cannot be satisfied. Mm. The stranger did not lodge in the street, but I opened my doors to the traveler. So now he begins to again question himself. Again, what did I do wrong? Even if it was a stranger out there in the streets, I can't name one, one point in time where I closed the door. Lord, you saw this. What stranger did you see pass by my house and I opened my doors to a traveler? Read. Really? If I covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom, did I forget a great multitude, or did the contempt of families terrify me, that I kept silent and went not out of the door? Oh, that one would hear me. Did I follow a multitude of the evil? Did I do anything wrong, Read. Oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me, and that my adversary had written a book. So now he's demanding an answer from the Most High. Lord, you need to talk to me. I don't get this. So he says, Oh, that my adversary will written a book. Surely, read, read. Surely I will take it upon my shoulder and bind it as a crown to me. I will declare unto him the number of my steps. As a prince would I, as a prince would I go near unto him. Read. If my land cry against me, or that the furrows likewise thereof complain. If I, have, if I have eaten the fruits thereof without money, or have caused the owners thereof to be to lose their life, let thistles grow instead of wheat, and cockle instead of barley. So the he's asking the answer from the Most High. He's asking for some solution to his problem. His friends couldn't give it, he couldn't figure it out. So he's asking. He already examined himself, so he's asking from the Most High. So from that, let's get to 38. Chapter 38. And here's the Most High's response. The book of Job, chapter 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? He says, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? He said, Job, you have no idea what you're talking about. 
who are you to dock and counsel that was already made against you? You have no idea. Everything that you're going through, I chose you to go through it. I counseled about this before you went through it. Who are you to dock and counsel about something that you don't even understand? Read on. Gird up thy loins like a man, for I would demand of thee and answer thou me. I'm going to ask you a question since you would ask me, read. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I created the earth? When I put the grass on the earth, how was the grass even on the water? How, how, was you there? Do you know anything about it? Where did the grass come from? Read. Declare if thou hast understanding. Tell me if you have understanding, Joe, since you're so curious about anything. Tell me. Read. Who, laid, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the lines upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? So how is the earth abiding still? If it emerged out of the water, what's keeping the earth right there on that plate, on this, what we call the earth, on the, on the sphere, on the globe? What's keeping earth right there? What's, what's, what's attaching it to it? He's asking Job, can you explain? Because we know that water was formed before earth. So where did it come from? Explain it. Read it. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut up the sea when the doors who shut up the sea who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? So who it says who shut up the sea with doors? Talking about its boundaries that it can't pass over. Who put the sea in the middle of what we call outer space and kept it right there? Or who gave birth to it? Read. When I made the cloud the garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it. I was talking to uh, Soja outside, you see, it was like looking at the clouds, like, this is a question that Job asked, like when you look at a dark cloud, what's keeping darkness there? Like we know water don't look like that in a cup, right? What is holding darkness in the shape of the cloud? What is it? What, what's formed the darkness in that cloud? What is it? Can you explain it? I'm curious now, can anybody explain it? Anybody? Any scientific reason? Nobody? No takers? I'm, I'm serious. I'm asking this question. Nobody? Uh, you, you can explain this. I got to hear it. What is keeping darkness in that cloud? Never mind. This is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> you have the answer? No. It's the same principle of um, the ocean. The deeper you go in the ocean, the less light goes through and get through the water. Is the cloud the same dense? density? No, it's not the same density. How is it holding it? That's why I say it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> we can't explain it. We can't explain it. The eye is not satisfied with his seeing. Neither can man utter it. We don't understand it. We don't understand it. For that. Let's get verse 9. 3, uh, three. Right, we read that. Verse, jump to verse 25. Verse 25. Who have divided the water who have divided the water course for the overflowing of water? Or a way for the lightning of thunder? To cause it to rain on the earth where no man is, on the wilderness wherein there is no man. To satisfy to satisfy the desolate and waste ground and to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth. Now I can read on and on. Basically what happened here, he took Job through creation. He showed him everything. It's like you, you worrying about your life, you know how to govern all of this, right? You know all of this had to come together by my understanding. Even this little situation you dealing with, think about everything else that I gotta deal with. You do, were you there for this? Were you there for this? Do you have any clue about this? So he's taking Job through everything. Now jump to chapter 40, verse, verse 1. The book of Job, chapter 40, and verse 1. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contended with the Almighty instruct him? He said, you want to tell me how to run the earth? Or run man's life? Read. He that reproveth God, let him answer it. He that reproveth God, meaning Job, you answer it. Read. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, 
but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Read. Then, then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins like a man. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt, wilt thou condemn me, that thou mayest be righteous? Hast thou an arm like God? Say, so how about you do it? You got an arm like God? Why don't you do it? Why don't you run the earth? I'm not doing a good job. Obviously. Things you questioning, maybe I'm not doing it good. Maybe you can do it better, Joe. You got an arm like God. How about you do it? Read. Or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Because Joe couldn't answer. He said, why don't you deck yourself with majesty and excellence, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Read on. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath. Why do you think he told Job that? We read this in the New Testament. Why do you think? Why do you, why do you think he told Job that? That's the question. Huh? Why do you think he told Job that to anoint himself or to 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 gird himself with majesty? Why do you think he said that to him? That's the question. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. God was basically telling him, hey, that I got your back. You got nothing to worry about. Okay, what scripture? I can't remember. I know, I know you're talking about it, though. Okay, all right. Paraphrase it. What, what, what? You want to paraphrase it? And not, okay, what, what is it? We, we should all know this. We should all know this. What was he telling Job? Uh, put on the whole armor of God. No, no. Think about what we just read. What we just read. Read, read it again. I'm gonna ask the question again. Read it again. Burns. Oh, okay. Read that, that part you to the phone. Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency. Uh huh. And array thyself with glory and beauty. And array yourself with glory and beauty. Glory and beauty. Deck thyself with majesty. You said paraphrase it, so I'm gonna paraphrase it. Okay. Basically saying that all things are done through me. Yes, but what was the message he was trying to show Job? Why did he say that? I gave y'all what it is, New Testament. I say throughout to New Testament. New Testament. Let me hear Soldier Mike with this. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. I'm looking at uh, Job 38 and 3. New Testament. New Testament. All right, uh, two more, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Is that a guy? Is that a guy? He'll come back. Um, be therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect? Nah, nah. Last one. Mishael, it's your best. Mishael, it's your best. Which one you prefer? First thing, Jabez. Jabez, alright. Alright, oh my God. First Peter's fourth, chapter 4, verse 13. Oof. 14? Ah, uh, nah. Alright, Makaya. Yeah. Matthew chapter six, six verse twenty-five. Uh, yeah. No. No. Nope. Uh, All right. Just go to it. Let's go to it. Let's go to it. Hebrews. Hebrews. Twelve and five. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, 
nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Read. For whom the Lord loveth. For whom the what? For whom the Lord loveth. Read. He chasteneth. He do what? He chasteneth. Read. And scourges every son. And whom he, he scourges every son. Whom he receives. You receive. That's what you're telling Job. You receive. Dress yourself with beauty and with glory and with excellency. You excellency, you are received. You're loved of the most high. Read on. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with, dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? This is why there was a counsel. Who should I test today? Which one, which one of my daughters am I going to try today? Which one of my sons? Which one really loves me like they say they do? You know what? I'm going to try somebody today. Let's see. Read on. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye be, then are ye bastards. So if you ain't going through that, most I said you, you're bastards. He's going to try you. You see, if you really serve him, like his servant Job, he wanted to see where his mind was. Job was tossed to and fro at times, but he held his integrity. Again, it's a story we should learn from. But he chastised us because he loves us. That's the way he operates. Let's go back. Let's go back. The book of Job, chapter 40 and verse 10. Were well, you were 42, right? You didn't go to 42 yet, right? No, I haven't gone to 42. Okay, yet. go ahead. Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold everyone that is proud and abase him. Look on everyone that okay, is. Okay, so this is what he said. This is what he would do to the proud. He would abase them. So from that, let's go to, what was that, 42? 40, right? 40, yes, sir. 40. Okay, jump to 42. 42 and 1. The book of Job, chapter 42 and verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and thou, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. We go from that to the book of Sirach. We're going to come back to this. Go to Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. We're almost done. we got a couple more. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha, chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Mm -hmm. Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure. And constantly endure, just like Job did. He had one person, one right after the other, telling him about something. Constantly endure, read. And make haste not in time of trouble. And make not haste in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him. Cleave unto him. And depart not away. Read. That thou mayest be increased. That thou mayest be what? Increased at thy last end. So that you may be increased at thy last end. Read. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And be not patient when and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Read. For gold is tried in the fire. For gold is tried in the fire, meaning you already love, you already accept it. Read. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So going back to 42 in Job, it says, I know, read. I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee. You see how Job was increasing his last? Not only he increasing the things that he lost, he increased in this understanding about the Most High, knowing that everything that happened upon earth is also governed by the Most High. Not to question nothing. Not to question nothing. Now, I said I was going to say this as an example. This, this is something that I had realized too. Um, even with the situation with our brother, your Cannon, that passed. Like I was, telling, I was telling a few people this. I was like, we have these expectations from the most high. It's like, nobody is supposed to go through that, right? As far as we know his situation. You know, he has a family. Um, so why would this be the will of the Most High? Lord, he got work to do. He needs to be here. Now again, I had to think about it. I said, at the end of the day, that's my thinking. Is that the will of the Most High or is that my will? Do I know the, do I know the Most High's plans greater than he? Or does he see something greater that he's going to be doing hereafter that I have no clue about? And I'm trying to stop what the Most High has greater. Just like Peter. Trying to stop Christ from giving up himself. He's like, you have no idea what you're talking about. If I don't leave, all of y'all gonna fall temptation, to temptation and, and be destroyed by the Satan. I'm doing this for not only you and for your brothers that are sitting at this table. Get behind me, Satan. The things that you you the things that you want 
is of yourself. You try to prevent me from death because of the things that you want. And again, this was the man that sat at the table with them, fed them, shared his thoughts, they shared ideas, he healed around them, and he was trying to prevent, like, look, Lord, this is not supposed to happen. What do you mean men are gonna, gonna take you? This is not supposed to happen. He wasn't looking at it like, you know what? This is bigger than myself. You leaving is the will of the Most High. So, again, I say this, I said, the Most High's will will be done. Whatever we think in our mind what should happen is not the will of the Most High. The Most High does things because it, it's for the best. And He does it to the right people because He sees things within you. He knows that you can do it. He said He tryeth gold in, in the furnace. Acceptable. He knows what we can deal with. He knows your strength. He knows that you can be an example to somebody else so He'll put you through it. Because he knows your faith. He knows you believe. He wants to try that. He wants to try you. See if you're just going to do just that. Deal with whatever will that he set forth to. So I'm like, I have these expectations. Like, this is not supposed to happen. But then he chooses something different. Then I, I get to work, right? And this is what I was telling the brother. I was like, this is the ironic situation. But it was something that I learned from him. I'm like, I know we fast and I know we pray. For situations like that, 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 that to never happen. But then you look at it, I'm thinking like, the will of the Most High is the scriptures. Everything we read in the scriptures is supposed to happen. So, if we believe that, if I believe that, who is supposed to fulfill the scripture when it says he take away the righteous so they won't suffer the things that are to come? Or, he make that time short so the wickedness on earth doesn't excuse their understanding. Like that has to be that has to be fulfilled. So why am I getting upset or why am I grieved when it happens to somebody I know or I love? I'm not supposed to question it. I'm not questioning it when I read it. So I had to ask myself, like, do I really accept the will of the most high? Even if it happens to somebody that I love dear to me and close to me. Do I accept it? Do I see it at his as his as his will? I had to look at that thing and I get the work. And I'm like, this time I was coming to Tampa. I didn't bring no food. I'm, at, I'm going to work now. Like I'm like, I'm already late. I'm not taking lunch. I'm, I'm late. I'm like three hours before I was late. So I'm just going to go straight through the work, go through the shift. So I bring no food from um, from home. So I get there, and I'm again. I already know what the Most High has done before, just like with our brother. Like I, Most High, he gonna be all right. This is my expectation, because again, he's God. He's supposed to. Heal. That's what he's supposed to do. But again, not understanding his will, his purposes, his reasons. So I get to work, no fool, I'm like, I'm gonna eat. I know, and this happened to me before. I, hey, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat. Something gonna happen, somebody gonna bring it, and sure enough, I'm like, okay. And I, I walk out, and I see something on the table. And you won't believe what it was. Again, it's ironic, because y'all know how I feel about certain places, right? I go out, how about, there's some food sitting on the table. Come from McDonald's. It's funny, but again, this is what I got from it. Now, again, I'm gonna say this with all seriousness. Brothers I'm not, and sisters, I'm not saying you can't eat it. It's your choice. I just have my preferences. I chose not to eat it. But I go out there and I see this, I'm like, that's the most high. But then what I got from it is like, it is not what I want. The Most High gave me what I need. But for other food, again, bro, I, I threw that away. And food start coming out of other places. It's like, I'm looking somewhere else, I'm like, this is, I, the best is I got from it, it is not about me. It's not what I want. The Most High sees the best. He gave me what I didn't even, he, he, I can't even put it in words. I can't put it in words. But it made me think about the situation with our brother and I was like, man, even in that situation, what I wanted is not what, it, it, it's not, it was not his will, is what the most I wanted. Same thing with the fool. It's not about what I wanted, it's what he wanted to show me, it's his will. I govern the earth. I made that, I moved, I moved that person's spirit to put that there, even if you don't like it. I'm just showing you that I do listen. I might not give you what you want, 
But I'm God. You can't question what I give you. It's not it's, you. You are not to question my motives. So it just. I mean, it was. It was. It was. It was a very interesting thing that happened, and I. I it was the best example that I got. That I. Uh, that I, I, I. Man, I'm getting choked up thinking about it. But it was amazing. You gonna say something, right? Okay. All right. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, to add to the point, many of great men have questioned, you know, and that's where a lot of the answers come from. Like, they would question Christ. That's how we got the Lord's Prayer. Well, Christ, why do they pray this way and teach us how to pray? How are we supposed to pray, right? Go to 2 Ezra chapter 4 real quick, 4 and 1. Because Ezra, he started to wonder the same type of questions. And he was dealing with the angel Uriel. And angel had... That uh, Uriel had to speak to him himself before it even got to the most high God. Like, right, you don't want him to answer. You, man. you remember what he said to Job. Okay, read. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 4, and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the angel that was sent unto me, whose name was Uriel, gave me an answer. So he answered him because Ezra was asking questions like, hey, why are we in these situations? Why are we going through what we're going through? What about Zion and this and that? Read. And, and said, Thy heart has gone too far in this world, and thinkest thou to comprehend the way of the Most High? That's what uh, the captain was going into. We think in, in our expectations, and the Lord said, look, man, your heart has gone too far in this world, and you think that you can understand God. We think that we can understand God, and it happens to all of us. You know, go to verse 11. Watch this. Verse 11. How should thy vessel then be able to comprehend the way of the highest? And the world being now outwardly corrupted to understand the corruption that is evident in thy sight. Right. So we've been going too far in this world that, what does it say? God's ways are higher than our ways. Our ways are not his ways. Right. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm -hmm. it's Job, I mean, Ezra had to get the same answer. And Ezra, he had to... What, rewrite the Bible or uh, not rewrite it, but he got the understanding of the scriptures like the book of Eli to, to rewrite or to he was inspired by the script or by the Most High to write the burnt books, the laws of the Most High God. And yet he still was like, man, I don't know what's going on. Why is it like this? Why is this going on? And the Most High or the, the angels like, well, I'm going to tell you real quick. You don't understand what's going on. The Most High, His purposes are not our purposes. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah. Let me read. Let me restore your mind. You know. So, Captain is absolutely right. It, ha I, it happened to me this week. I was like, Lord, man, what is going on? And He had to remind me. So, it's gonna happen to us all. Yeah. Let's go from that to the book of Sirach, 18. I'm gonna have to cut a lot of these out. No, let's just go to Sirach. Uh, no, we have to do it. We have to do it. Sirach 18. And go ahead and get uh, Matthews 10 and 29 so we can uh, explain both at the same time. All right. Sirach 18. 18, 2 to 3. And 1039? Yeah. Right. So, 1029. 1029. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiastes in the Bible, chapter 18, verse 2. The Lord only is righteous, and there is none other but he. The Lord only is righteous, and there is none other but he. Read. Who governeth the world with the palm of his hand? So he governeth everything in the palm of his hands, everything that happened upon earth. Who governeth the world in the palm of his hands. Read. And all things obey his will. And all things obey his will. Life, death, the sun, the moon, light. Darkness, poverty, uh, the, the, to, to, to get riches, everything is governed by his hand. Read. For he is the king of all, by his power, dividing holy things among them that are dividing holy things among them from profane. Keep going. Yep. To whom has he given power to declare his works? And who shall find out his noble act? Verse, uh, I'll just go to that verse I told you to get, Matthews. The book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? So he says, are not two sparrows birds sold for a farthing? 
Read. And one of them shall not fall on the ground. And one of these birds should not fall on the ground. Without your father. So he's saying these are the things that we should consider. Not even a bird fall out of the sky without the most high considering considering it first. Birds don't even leave the earth and without him saying so. This is how much he has in control. He said a bird won't even fall out of the sky without my say so, without my say so in it. So nothing happens without the most high's counsel first. We can't prevent that. We are we gotta accept it. Let's go from that. Let's go to uh, Sirach 15, verse 14. Book of Sirach, chapter 15, and verse 14. He himself made man from the beginning and left him in the hand of his counsel. Going back to what we read in Genesis. Every situation is given to man. He left us in the hands of his counsel. He wants to figure out what we're going to do with that information. Read. If thou wilt to keep the commandment and to be... And to perform acceptable faithfulness. And to perform what? Acceptable faithfulness. Is your faithfulness acceptable? Are you willing to take on the challenges that I give you? Do you appreciate it? Do you trust my decisions? Read. He has set fire and water before thee. Stretch forth thy hand unto whether thou wilt. Read. Before man is life and death. Before man is life and death, read. And whether him liketh shall be given him. For the wisdom of the Lord is great, and he is mighty in power, and beholdeth all things. And beholdeth all things, read. And his eyes are upon them that fear him. And his eyes are upon them that fear him. And he knoweth every work of man. He has commanded no man to do wickedly. So let's drop that. Let's go to Hebrews. I'm going to end it with these two. I'll, pra I'll paraphrase the rest. So we read in John chapter 4 verse 23. It says, Most high God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And that, then they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He seeketh for all such as to worship him. That's what he wants to see. Do we really worship and do we really serve the Most High? That's the reason for all of our trials. He said he seek it for such as to worship him. Let's go from that. Hebrews 12. Let's read verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. One let we just read. One we just read. Would you read? Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus, his example, the author and finish of our faith. You're talking about a man that was in the wilderness that was crying to the Most High to take away the cup. He said his tears dropped down as it was blood. Like, let's read that real quick. Go to that real quick. Luke 22. Luke 22, verse 42. And I'll uh, get Mark 14. Mark 14. You got two mics over there? We just got one. Okay. In uh, Luke uh, 22, verse 42. The book of Luke, chapter 22, and verse 42. Who got the mic out there? Say. Okay, read uh, Mark 14, 36. I want to um, close it out. I don't know how much time we got left. Read that. Luke 22, 42. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You see, the choice that he had, the mindset that he had, Lord, if it be your will, now he already knew what the will of the most high, but again, this is the temptation. If it be your will, remove this cup from me. But if it's your will, thy will be done. Accepting the most high's choice. But again, this is what he bottled in. This is what he suppressed. Let's get that real quick, Mark 14. 36. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 26. And when they had sung a hymn. 36. 36. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible. So he knew what the Most High was capable of, just like Job. Lord, you were able to form things out of, dead things out of the sea. I know your, your, I know your power, just like Christ knew. He says, all things are possible unto thee, read. Unto thee, take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not that I will, but 
thou wilt. But nevertheless, I will, but thou wilt. Read. And he comes. No, that's it, that's it. Hold on. Go back to go back to now to Luke. I think this is the point. Luke. Yeah. Verse 43. I, I wanted that with his, his response to it. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And being in agony, he would he did what? He prayed more earnestly. So it's not that the most I didn't hear our prayers or your prayers. That was not his will. That was yours. You ask him for the most high, he sees better, he gives you what he wants from you, for you. He knows better. So Christ asking in prayer, agony. How many of you know, type that word in, agony. We gotta understand what these words mean. Agony. Extreme physical or mental suffering. Extreme mental or uh, physical uh, mental suffering. Pain, hurt, suffering, torture, torment, torment, anguish, affliction. Read again. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood. His sweat was that read? And his sweat was as great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he arose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. But at that time, again, when we read in Mark, he accepted the will of the Most High, regardless of how he felt. This is how we all have to view the life that we live. Lord, I'm willing to accept any situation you put me in, long as I make it, long as I'm acceptable. Give me the spirit to accept your will or to endure. That's what we all have to ask the Most High. Uh, did we finish our Hebrews? We finished our Hebrews, right? Now let's go back to Hebrews. We're we'll ending right. with that. Hebrews 12. Yeah, 12 and uh, 2. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, whom for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Who for the joy that, that was set before him endured the cross. Despising the shame. Despising the shame, however, or read on. And it sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. But look how he was exalted. If he endured just that little moment of being uh, shamed. Look how much he was exalted. Sat on the right hand of the Most High God. Everything ends with a good story. Long as we endure. Long as we keep God's commandments and honor his will, we are going to see the kingdom of heaven. We just got to endure these exercises that he put us through and understand. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us.
more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.